Shame. Forever shame! That's the outrage Michael Mack felt after finding out a priest who was a friend of the priest who molested him had molested a boy like him. In this podcast episode, we'll continue on Michael's journey. It's the one that led him to that revelation. You're listening to Conversations with His Molester. It's a four-part documentary podcast series from Capital Broadcasting Company. If you haven't heard episodes one and two, you'll want to listen to those first, then come back to this one. I'm documentary producer Clay Johnson. This podcast series is a companion to the WRAL documentary, Speaking the Unspeakable. We'll tell you more about that at the end of this episode. I'm going to start with a warning. This is a story about child sexual abuse, so it's not suitable for children. This was beyond my wildest dreams. That's from Michael Mack's play, Conversations with My Molester, A Journey of Faith. He's talking about his excitement over having the opportunity to have lunch with the best friend of the priest who molested him when he was 11. Michael calls that priest Father Gordon. As an adult, Michael always dreamed of talking to Father Gordon to get answers as to why the father abused him. Father Gordon died before Michael had the opportunity to do that. But at Father Gordon's funeral, his best friend, Father Al, invited Michael to join him for lunch afterward at Father Gordon's favorite restaurant. At a certain point in the lunch, he uh, mentions Father Gordon's issue with children. And of course, I can't help but hear that. And so I ask him, you know, did he ever talk about that? And he said, well, not really. You know, it, it brought him a lot of trouble. After lunch, as Michael headed out to Father Al's car, he decided to tell him what Father Gordon did to him. And he's receptive, he's open, he expresses his sorrow about that whole thing. And I feel like there's something, I don't know, magical, miraculous uh, in that moment, that this is sort of like a piece of the healing process that I uh, have been looking for. It wasn't the conversation Michael had always wanted to have with Father Gordon, but perhaps it was the next best thing. After the lunch, Father Al invited Michael to join him for lunch again the following Saturday. He said perhaps another friend of Father Gordon, Father Aiden, could join them. Michael had met him at Father Gordon's funeral. Father Al talked about how Father Aiden, Father Gordon, and some other priests would get together to play cards or checkers every Wednesday evening. Which church is Father Aiden assigned to? Eh, he's on a leave of absence, working out a personal issue. A couple of days later, Michael called Father Al to confirm their lunch date. When I get home, a little later in the week, I get a message from him saying that he's leaving town. He's got to go, got to leave the country. A sick relative in Canada, got to leave first thing in the morning. Sorry, we're not going to be able to get together. So he called Father Aiden to see if he wanted to have lunch the coming Saturday. Father Aiden, it's Michael Mack. Listen, I was just wondering if this Saturday you might like to get together for a cup of... He hung up. When it was about time for Father Al to come home, Michael called him. I get a recorded message. The number you dialed is not accepting calls from your number. He tried Father Aiden again. The number you dialed is not accepting calls from your number. Michael wondered if they had talked about him at their Wednesday evening get-together. Who is this guy? We don't know him. Asking questions, getting phone numbers. He could be a reporter. He could be working for a lawyer. Get rid of him. Michael searched for Father Aiden online and found out the church had defrocked him and stripped him of his pension. He also found out that Father Aiden was facing multiple allegations of child molestation. There's an accuser who has said about him that he was part of a group of men that met in a house and played pass around the boy. And for the first time in my life, I feel a sense of horror and outrage 
and that boy Michael saw himself. How dare you hide behind your robe preaching Jesus with your filthy secret? You call this the work of God? Shame. Forever shame! Years later, Michael decided to return to Brevard and to the church where Father Gordon molested him in the rectory. The building was now a community arts center. And I look up into what was the rectory window, and incredibly, there is an image of a boy. It was a self-portrait a boy had done for a children's art show. It just seems so striking to me because in my mind, there's only one boy that could be looking out that rectory window at me. It's sort of like I'm seeing myself look out at me as an adult as I look up at him as a child. As a child living in Brevard, Father Gordon wasn't Michael's only molester. A group of older boys had molested him, and so had a family friend and neighbor named Rick. While in Brevard, Michael decided to reach out to Rick and set up a meeting. The instant I saw his face on Probart Street, I forgave him everything. Or something forgave him for me. I didn't plan it, didn't decide it. It happened to me, without me. We talk about UFOs, computers, motorcycles, politics, everything except the one thing. Michael learned that Rick was living in poverty, had no friends, and was suffering from mental illness. It seemed to me that of the two of us, that I was the lucky one. And as I learned about his story and I learned the context of his life, I mean, there was something actually kind of vulnerable and broken about him. And in that moment that I realized that I could bring this up, I didn't feel like I needed to. My heart went out to this guy. And I really didn't feel like I needed to pursue this with him. Michael decided to go to the new Catholic church across town for confession. He hadn't done that since he was a child with Father Gordon. He told the priest his story and at the end expected some sort of penance. And, and he didn't do it. And so I said, Father, uh, you know, aren't you going to give me some penance? And he says to me, You've done your penance. Go in peace. And it felt to me like, yes, for 40 years, I'd been doing penance. I'd done my time with that. I didn't need to do that anymore. After confession, the priest invited Michael to Mass. It was a packed house, but Michael squeezed into a seat. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And here they come. Forty-three years of tears I've choked back. I can barely see through this waterfall. But I understand even in this moment of release, where I feel like I'm releasing all of this pain of my life, that this is really just the beginning. In our next and final episode, Michael's New Beginning. This podcast was produced by Capital Broadcasting Company and edited by Jay Jennings. We thank Michael Mack for giving us permission to use excerpts from his play to help tell his story. We hope you'll join us for episode four in the series, Conversations with His Molester. You can find it where you found this episode. Subscribe to get all four. And to see more of Michael's story and walk his journey of forgiveness with his stepbrother, Knight, who was also the victim of child sexual abuse, watch the documentary, Speaking the Unspeakable, at WRALDocumentary.com. I'm WRAL documentary producer Clay Johnson. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.